Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're out here with Arwen today and after all of the rain on the weekend, it's pretty grimy, but it's drying up quickly. So today I wanted to talk about what you should have for your goat first aid kit because goats get into trouble, a lot like ponies, and sometimes you're going to need to tend wounds or tend to a sick goat or whatever. So you do want a small, you're in the way, you're in the way. I'm trying to look at Arwen. <laughs> trying to get good shots, Arwen, not Shadowfax heads. Okay, I love you. Mwah. But I want Arwen. I love you so much. Anyway. <laughs> so, first aid kits for goats. The first thing you want to know is that when you have items for your first aid kits that are uh, medications or creams or anything like that, you want to check their expiry date. Get rid of them if they're expired. And you want to make sure you know how to store them. So some medications and some ointments and stuff require refrigeration and they'll have to live in your fridge. So make sure you know how to store them so you're not the reason your antibiotics or your vaccines or your creams or whatever are going bad. Check the storage directions on the packaging. It will tell you. The next thing you want to do is you want to meet with your vet. Have a conversation and kind of cultivate a relationship, but you want to talk to him about the potential things that could go wrong and what you're comfortable and able to treat at home. Because not everyone has the same comfort level. Are you comfortable pulling a kid from a struggling mama? No? Then you don't need a kid and kit, you need your vet's number and emergency number. <laughs> okay, if you're not comfortable doing something, that's okay. Not everyone has to be comfortable, for example, giving a vaccine. You don't have to be comfortable doing that, but you do have to know what you are comfortable doing so that you can adjust and know when to call your vet and know why you have to call your vet. So if you're going to have a vet come do the vaccines, there's no point in having vaccines on hand because the vet's going to do it anyway. So figure out what you're comfortable with and what you are able to do yourself. So what should be in your first aid kit? Um, a lot of people will tell you antibiotics. I'm going to say no. I do not keep antibiotics in my first aid kit. One of the reasons is now that pretty much every, a lot of people in North America can't get them without a vet prescription, there's no point because the vet is not going to prescribe them if, for whatever reason, they haven't seen your goat. They don't know how your goat's doing. They haven't diagnosed your goat with anything. They're not going to give you a blind prescription if they have never seen that goat. Usually they can write a prescription if they've seen the goat in the last year, but if you haven't um, taken your goat to the vet or haven't had anyone out to do vaccines or whatever, then no, they can't. Look at how dirty that horse is. Look at him. He rolled in mud. And look how fuzzy his legs are getting. Winter's coming. Not the point. But it's impressive. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So I'm going to say no to the antibiotics for one, that reason, but for two, a lot of times to figure out what antibiotic you need to use, you actually need to run cultures, and most of us can't do that ourselves. Most of the time, you are going to need a vet to run those cultures or a vet to figure out what antibiotic is best suited for that particular pro uh, problem. So get yourself a goat savvy vet and have them on call because you want to be able to get those cultures. Um... You also may not have any access. Like, we can't just walk into the feed store and buy um, antibiotics anymore. We can't do that. And a lot of other people can't either. So we have to get a prescription from the vet anyway. Also, randomly using antibiotics when you don't know what the problem is and you don't know what you're treating and you don't even know if it's something that needs antibiotics is what creates super bacteria and um, antibiotic resistance. So I don't keep antibiotics in my first aid kit. I call the vet. So cultivate a good relationship with a vet so that you can call him in an emergency. Figure out what the after hours number is, all that stuff. A good livestock vet, worth his weight in gold. And last time I said his when referring to a vet, someone messaged me and said, well, you know, girls can be vets too. Yes, I know. My livestock vet happens to be a man, so I always say he. Just like when I'm talking about farriers, I often say she because my farrier is a woman. So don't get on me about that, <laughs> okay? I know that vets can be girls, okay? Women can be vets too, 
I just say he because my vet is a man. Okay? Because that was an issue last time. <laughs> anyway. So, what else might you want in your first aid kit? Maybe vaccines. So, this one highly depends on whether you are comfortable administering a vaccine yourself. You don't have to be. It is completely okay to have the livestock vet out and have him vaccinate your goats. No big deal. Um, just know that. If you're not going to be able to do it yourself, there's no sense in stalking them at home. There's no sense in purchasing them from your vet and bringing them home. You might as well just call him, tell him your goat needs to be vaccinated, and he'll come out and bring the vaccines with him. It is much easier for him to do that if he's going to be administering the vaccine anyway. So figure out if you're even comfortable doing a vaccine. If you are comfortable with vaccinating your own goat, and it is permitted where you live, it is where I live, but if you are permitted to do that, if you can purchase the vaccine without any undue restrictions, and you're comfortable and you know how to do it, you should feel free to do that. If you're not comfortable, no shame at all. Not everybody is comfortable with injections. If you're not comfortable with injections, have your vet do the vaccinating and don't worry about vaccines in your first aid kit. So what other things might you want? I have epinephrine, uh, epine I can't talk today, for anaphylactic shock. I just can't talk today. I haven't slept since the storm the other day. I've been awake a long time. But for anaphylactic shock, because I did have a goat go into anaphylactic shock, shock a few years ago. See, I can't talk. I just can't talk. We're just going to move past it and pretend I can talk just fine. But <laughs> anyway, so yes, I did have a goat go into anaphylactic shock. After, ever since then, I have had something on hand because I am comfortable administering it if I have to. She's fine, by the way. <laughs> Every video, somebody comments. She okay? She's fine. She's sunning herself in the sun. This guy has a dirty butt. Yeah, you're a good girl. You're such a good girl. Also, I hear a chicken. So that might be something you want, but if again, if you're not comfortable injecting things, then it might be wasted on you. It's okay not to be comfortable injecting. Um, things you definitely want, uh, probiotic paste, because if your goat has had a problem and their rumen has slowed down, that probiotic paste can help get that rumen going again. That is really important because if the goat's rumen stops, the goat isn't going to make it very long. So that's a good thing to have. Uh, Nutri Drench for goats. That is a really handy thing to have. It's basically a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals that you can administer to your goat if they are kind of lethargic if they're not getting what they need you need them to get up and go it can really help uh, you might want uh, banamine that is from your vet usually but if you have a good relationship with your vet banamine might be something that you want uh, b1 vitamins is really good because sometimes goats have a problem with b1 vitamins and sometimes you're going to want to um, administer b1 you can get it injected as inje hi you can get it as injectables or a lot of different forms. Again, if you're not comfortable injecting something, don't get an injectable version of something. Okay? There's far too many people who get something and then they go, I can't do it. If you can't do it, that's fine. But then don't waste your money on the thing that you can't do. Uh, you might want a copper bolus. Uh, goats do tend to have a copper problem, a copper deficiency problem. That's okay. You might have to administer a copper bolus. It is good to have them on hand so you don't have to hunt one down because sometimes the feed stores don't carry them. So you might have to order them in. So it's a good idea to have a couple laying around in case you need to use them. Um, we don't typically have to use them because in our foliage and stuff, there's actually plenty of copper. So generally we don't have copper deficiency in goats. But if you live in an area where there's copper deficiency, you may have to um, administer. <laughs> Are the flies bugging you? Don't worry, we'll get frost soon. As soon as we get frost, there'll be no more flies. But yes, yeah, so copper bolus, if it's necessary in your area, you definitely want a saline solution, either on hand or know how to make it. You can actually make saline solution at home. Um, you can also buy it from your vet, whichever way you want to go. It doesn't really matter. You can make it at home or you can buy it. Not a big deal. Um, the saline solution is great for flushing out wounds and stuff because it'll help uh, clear the wounds of debris and it's just a good thing to have on hand so I would have that on hand at all times an electrolyte solution for when goats are going downhill fast and you got to keep them alive till the vet can get to you an electrolyte solution approved for goats 
either one you make yourself, which you can do, talk to your vet, or one that you buy, which you can also do, not a big deal. Uh, electrolyte solutions are really good, and they're really handy if you have a problem. Uh, you might want a betadine or other solution for wounds, depending on what's used in your area. Talk to your vet again. You can usually buy it from them. Uh, it's good to have on hand in case there are wounds that you absolutely need to tend to. Uh, colloidal silver is something that some people like, some people don't. It can buy you time with wound care and stuff until the vet can get to you for really severe wounds. Beware, not a colloidal silver has silver in it, and if it doesn't have silver in it, it's useless. So, can you use colloidal silver? Yes. Do you have to spend the money on the good colloidal silver? Yes. Is it worth it? For some people, yes. If you can't afford it, skip it. It is not strictly a necessary thing. Some people like to use it, some people don't. It's not necessary, but it can buy you a little bit of time till the vet can get to you. So, worth thinking about having on hand. Uh, scissors and scalpels, because sometimes something happens and you have to deal with it right now. Because goats are a menace to society and a menace to themselves. <laughs> so, sometimes something's going to happen and you're going to have to tend wounds or... One time I had to untangle a goat from twine, don't ask. But scissors and scalpels in your kit is a good idea. A good flashlight. Flashlight with batteries and bulbs in your kit. This is so essential. Because goats do things at the stupidest hours. Or goats get lost and you got to go tromping through the bush to find your dang goat. So a really good battery, a really good flashlight with good batteries and bulbs as backup. So you don't want to be like, oh no, my flashlight's dead and I don't have any batteries. Make sure you've got a flashlight. Make sure you've got batteries or charged batteries or whatever. However you power your flashlight, make sure that you have that on hand. Because guaranteed, if you don't, you're going to need it. It's really annoying. <laughs> but yes, a good flashlight. You want standard things like cotton swabs, gauze, sterile pads, vet wrap, all that kind of stuff. You definitely want to make sure you have it's really good to be able to tend and dress wounds. When something happens and you don't feel like you need to call the vet because you can deal with it yourself, you want like the basics of first aid stuff so that you can tend those cuts and gashes. Like I don't call the vet every time she scrapes herself on something random because I'm not going to. I don't call the vet every time Shadowfax nicks himself or vodka runs into a branch. <laughs> it happens, right? You can't call the vet for absolutely everything. So it's in your best interest to make sure you have a kit that is stocked with gauze and stuff. That's really helpful. You absolutely need a digital thermometer if you are going to raise goats. Because you need to be able to take your goat's temperature if something goes wrong. Here's why. First of all, you have to take temperature up the butt, which is not always fun. But if there's something wrong with your goat and you think you have to start force feeding them, especially if they're babies and you're trying to force a bottle or your goat has been lethargic and you want to force something into their belly. If a goat's temperature is too low, their rumen stops functioning and there's zero reason to actually administer any kind of food. So you can't give anything by mouth until you get their temperature up. You don't know what their temperature is if you can't take their temperature. So a good quality digital thermometer is really, really important. You want disposable gloves. I promise you something gross is going to happen. Even if you don't raise kids, so even if you don't have the babies and you don't have to pull little ones from mom or anything like that, you still are going to encounter something gross that you're going to want to glove up for. Have those gloves on hand. Make sure they're the right size for you. Okay? Because there's nothing more annoying than going to get a pair of gloves out of your disposable glove box and realizing they're all too small. So make sure you have the right size gloves for you in your kit. It's really helpful. You definitely need blood stop powder. There's many different things you can use. You can even just use flour or cornstarch. But if something happens and your goat gets a wound and it won't stop bleeding, being able to administer a kind of a quick stop powder or a bleed stop powder, powder something like that, to get the wound to stop bleeding is really essential. Okay, it helps the blood clot and uh, can help you save your goat's life. So that stuff is really, really useful. Anyone who has any farm animals should have that. Even if you just clip your dog's nails, it's good to have a powder that you can dip the foot in if you cut a little too deep. So it's a good idea to have this no matter what kind of animals you have because you never know what's going to happen. So 
do be aware of that. Try to make sure you have that on hand. It's really useful. The last thing in the kit that I would recommend would be needles and syringes. But again, only if you are okay administering uh, shots and stuff yourself. If you are not, then don't bother because you're never going to use them. It's a waste of money. So if you're comfortable administering shots, if you're comfortable with that particular procedure, not everybody is, but if you are, then yes, absolutely, you want to make sure you get yourself some good quality syringes in a variety of sizes so that you can administer medication and vaccines to your goats. But again, don't bother if you're not going to do it yourself. So I don't love injecting. I'll do it if I have to. So I have only a very small amount of syringes. I'll only do it in an emergency. Otherwise, I make the vet do it because that's his job. That's what I pay him for. And I don't like doing it, <laughs> but I'll do it if I have to. So figure out where you are on that spectrum of can I inject my goat if I have to or can I just not do it? So that'll kind of guide you and you'll figure out exact. Hi. Yeah, I know. You look so weird. Oh, sunning the chin. Big stretch. So figure out where you stand on giving shots and that'll kind of guide you as to whether or not you need any of those needles. Anyway, that is about it for my recommendation for uh, different items you might want in your goat's kit for a first aid emergency. You never know. Uh, hopefully you never need it. But if you do, it's a good thing to assemble one. Everyone should have one just in case something happens to your precious goats. That's about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.